Hello, Albuquerque. What a great night. I think that uh, we live in a great nation when we can come together like this and we can openly talk about what God's doing in our life. And uh, things are still good in this nation this way, don't you think? This is a two-year-old colt that I don't know. He's apparently been halter broke when he was younger, but he's uh, obviously, as you can see in his condition, he's just really been turned out. As a form of a disclaimer, I want you to know that this isn't a horse breaking clinic. This is a message. This rope, this signifies the pressures in life. Because every one of us feel pressure. There's things that make us move. It's, it's the things that drive us. It's the things that keep us going in life. If we understood who God was and what his plan was for us, none of us would ever run again. The thing that you want to see tonight is that you are you're very much like this animal as I am. You were born with a will. It was a nature. We'll call it an instinct. You can see this horse isn't mean. He just doesn't understand. He doesn't know what he was created for. Right now, his only desire in life is to just get by. He wants to just live his life. His idea of freedom is doing whatever it is that he wants to do. How many of you know that we're like that? But what he's figuring out already is that the thing that's pushing him is actually making him tired. But me, when he's looking to me that he's finding rest, God has got a plan for us. And it's not to continue to live our lives running, busy, calendars full, going from one thing to the next, hoping maybe one day we're going to figure out what our life is really all about. Do you realize that this horse can't figure that out apart from me? He'll never figure it out apart from me. Because within this animal is a tremendous amount of potential potential that he's not able to unlock. See, the Bible calls it sin. Sin is a thing that every one of us were born with. It's a sin nature. I think that we have a nation who maybe even misunderstood what that meant. Does sin mean that we're doing bad things? No, sin is actually a nature that the Bible says that every one of us were born with. And that nature is, is, if we can just figure out a way to live our life on our own terms, apart from God, then that's what life is all about. That's not the truth. You and I, just like this animal, our sin nature separated us from God, and we lived our lives independently from Him. We've been consumed with our things. We've been consumed with our activities. And we're distracted. Just as this horse is being distracted, he wants to find rest. He wants to figure out what I want from him. But it's confusing. There's a lot of things going on that he's not used to. How many of you believe that in just one decision that your life can actually be completely changed? I want this horse to understand that I actually love him, that I've got a plan for him that he can't even picture right now. 
And that if he will trust me, that I can give him new life. As he listens to me and he does as I ask him to do, he's going to discover things that have never even entered his mind. This horse has never had anybody on him. Notice I'm not, I'm not trying to just make him trust me. I'm earning his trust because he's finding that the more he trusts me, the quieter he is. He's starting to figure it out. He's realizing that this guy doesn't want to hurt me. He doesn't want to take away from me. People have wondered, who is God? What does he want? What is his agenda in my life? The truth is we don't have to look any farther than the cross because God proved finally, without any question, that he was willing to die so that we could live. It was the blood of Jesus that made it possible for us to come into a relationship with God. Not just a relationship of knowing, not just a relationship of reading a book and hoping we could follow rules. It's the gospel of the kingdom. It's the fact that God created you and then he gave you a free will. He gave you the ability to make a decision on what it is that you wanted to do with your life. That decision has been yours up until tonight, and it remains yours. I think he wants to trust me. I think every one of you are having a question tonight. Now what, what? What is it that God wants with my life? Maybe you've tried religion. I know that there's a lot of religious agenda going on. You may even think that I have one. I do have an agenda tonight. I want to clear the name of Jesus Christ. He's not after your money. He's not after your church attendance. He's not after you quitting all the bad things you've done so that you can maybe be seen right in his eyes. He loves you. He is crazy about you, and he has done that. He has proved it. There's nothing more he can do. When the music fades And all the strips away And I simply come Longing just to happened very fast. This is horse has actually encountered uh, and stepped into a whole entirely new realm because his perception of who I was his entire life was that I just exist 
to keep him alive. My desire is that he would have life and that he would have it more abundantly. That he would go from glory to glory, that his life would, would never stop increasing. So he would go from just, right now he's settled with allowing me to sit on him. He's accepted me. He's received me. He's trying to listen to me. But the day will come where I can, I can just shift my weight and he will turn to a direction. He will watch my eyes and he'll be so sensitive to my desires that he will go in those directions. I'm going to have Cody Lostro give us a hand here and see if we can get a deeper level of trust and see if he'll allow me to put a saddle on him. It almost seems like I'm cheating. <laughs> this doesn't normally happen. Anybody that's messed with horses, kind of a jug-headed, doubt he's got papers. What a special animal. You know what I say? He still might buck me off. But I say a tragedy would have happened had this horse lived his life apart from me. If he would have gone through his life thinking somehow all he's got to do is figure out a way to exist, figure out a way to try and find some happiness somewhere, maybe do a little bit of breeding, and then die. Do you realize that you were created for so much more than that? You're an eternal being. You're going to live forever. God gave us a choice whether we could spend eternity living with him, beginning now. Or we could live our lives apart from him, beginning now, and spend eternity separated from him. That's what our nature did to us. God did not come to stick us in church buildings to where we could just figure out how to be good people so that we could call ourselves Christians because we believe in God. This horse believed in me, but he was still apart from me. And so I ask you tonight, because there's gonna be a decision made, and you're gonna have an opportunity to respond to that decision. On whether you wanna live your life apart from God, or you wanna live your life with him. The Bible said that God said he would never leave you, nor would he ever forsake you. If you would receive him, he said, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone who will hear my voice and allow me to come in, I will come in and I will have a relationship with him. I'll have fellowship with him. I'll restore the things that separated you from me. We're all in the same boat. We ain't getting out of this alive. Right? I'm gonna ask you if you could consider where you're at because God has just invaded your life tonight and just said, I want you to understand how much I love you. I wanna understand that I've got a better plan for your life than what you've settled for. He wants you to ask for help. He knows that you can't do it by yourself. 
That's why we're incomplete apart from Him. So if you know that your life is not this, that you've not come to a place to where you're just submitted and the Spirit of God has come and dwelling inside of you and leading your life, I'm gonna ask you to stand right where you're at. Is there anybody who wants to join me tonight in surrendering their life to Jesus Christ? Stand where you are. That's why we call it the good news. I don't know if you've been watching the news lately, there's not a lot of good news. This is good news. And God is still on the throne and he's still pouring his grace out on people. God is not judging nations because of their sin. I don't believe. I believe he's waiting for a people to intercede for those who don't yet understand what their life was for. So we as a nation need to be praying for Japan. We need to be praying for the Middle East. We need to be appreciative of what God has trusted to us. And while we are still Americans, what a tremendous gift we have to come to a public place and just worship our God. Tell others about Him. Let them deal with who God is. Before we go, would you guys pray with me? Father, I don't know uh, who is still within the sound of my voice, but I stand right here in agreement with them and humble myself before you and thank you for loving us. Thank you for having a plan that goes beyond what we ever expected. Thank you for trusting us with your truth. Thank you for loving us when we hated you. And thank you for what you're doing in this building even now. Thank you for the leaders of the PBR continuing to extend grace to us so that we can meet our fans this way. Father, we are humbled by you and we're submitted to you. And if there are those who are still seated and they didn't know what to do tonight, I pray with them right now that, Father, I know my life is apart from you. I know I am not what you intended me to do and tonight I make a decision to give my life to you. Thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Thank you for the atonement of Jesus Christ so I can come into this relationship with you. What an honor. And we pray all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen.